Alright, I'm Johnny Jungle Guts. I'm up in the gig to talk about Amazing Spider-Man 2. Because they already just made Spider-Man 3 like five minutes ago. I mean, that's everyone's complaint. I don't even know why I'm just talking about it. But I went to go see this Spider-Man. Let me tell you. It was good. It was really good. I don't know what it is about Spider-Man, but I get so emotional about him. And it's just like because they just have to just hit him over the head with bad things every time. It's like nothing good ever gets to happen to him. And he's like the nicest one of the superheroes. <sighs> Spider-Man and Gwen Stacy like seem sort of like... I mean, there was lots of awkward bits of dialogue. Like, when you're, like, a teenager and you're, like, dating somebody, you're always, like, trying to say, like, these really dramatic things to them that always, like, sound kind of stupid. But, like, which was basically what these two were doing to each other the whole movie, but it felt like the way teenagers actually do it instead of, like, the way people say that they care about each other in, like, a bad movie. So, that was, like, really well done. Spider-Man's costume is way better in this, I've realized, because you can actually see the fabric, and it's not just all this, like, perfect CGI thing. And you also, this guy who plays Spider-Man looks way more like Spider-Man than Tobey Maguire. He's like a little shrimp. He's like a puny little swimmer Spider-Man. There is Electro in it, played by Jamie Foxx. He did a good job. Electro was like a drug addict for electricity but he also was a drug addict for electricity because he had all these problems in his life because he didn't have any friends and he was obsessed with spider-man and then once he becomes a drug addict for electricity all this like misunderstandings that happen that make him be really bad but he kind of reminded me of like a homeless person that's on a lot of drugs and, like, they aren't really trying to do anything wrong, but they, like, sort of have a bunch of misunderstandings with the police because they're crazy, and then they start to do, like, really bad things. So there's a, I felt like there was a sort of, that sort of energy to that. There's also a really great part when, like, he sees his face on all the TV screens in Times Square, and he's like, I'm famous now. And it was, like, appropriate to our media-saturated moment of life. But it was sort of, it was real feeling, but a little racially insensitive to have it be the one time they have a black guy play the villain, feeling like a homeless guy as the villain. But maybe he didn't feel like it. Maybe I'm racist. I'm not racist, but I thought Jamie Foxx did a good job. But, he did remind me of Dr. Manhattan, like, from Watchmen a lot, because he's blue, and he's, like, reincorporating and disincorporating himself all the time. I don't ever remember Electro doing that in the comics. In the comics, I remember Electro, like, wearing a big electrotricity mask and, like, being, like, kind of around. But one time in the comics, he exploded a prison and let out all of the bad villains and that was like his claim to fame for like a while he's probably still riding off that in the comic books but anyway he was good except that he reminded me of dr manhattan then they have this little creep come through as harry osborne that was like the really good casting i thought whoever the hell that was did a really good job as harry osborne because he was like a little piece of slime he was so creepy this movie stayed true to the comics in the most brutal ways and that had me thinking about what was going to happen up until the last minute of it when it hap of what happened. And but the most the most tear worthy moment of the whole thing that Spider Man stops being Spider Man for a little while. The Rhino shows up, played by Paul Giamatti. Paul Giamatti, I really had high hopes for you as the Rhino. Right now, you're not blowing me away. 
I really wanted to see you in some sort of like, you know, gray body paint. Could we get a little like Paul Giamatti naked and some gray body paint as the Rhino? That would have been like way better than this like Transformer stuff they got going for him right now. I mean, that would have blown me away if they had done that. There's no texture to this character. He's just acting really Russian. He's just like so Russian. Does my hair look bad? Paul Giamatti's about to fuck the game up, and Spider-Man's not around to... He's the, out of the picture. So there's a little boy that walks out into the street dressed as Spider-Man like he's gonna, you know... It's very emotional. I always am a sucker for situations involving fans in the, these movies. Like in the Avengers at the end when they have the little clips of everyone in the news talking about what happened. That's a tearjerker for me because I'm really into fans. I'm really into people being fans of things. I don't know why Spider-Man always gets me so emotional, but it did. So I'll give this one a pass. I mean, it wasn't like revolutionary. It was just like, you know, in a lot of ways it was just like every other Hollywood block. Like if you're a superhero movie connoisseur, you'll think this movie is better than someone who's not as into superhero movies who's just like, oh, this is just another superhero movie that was like, okay. Um, because like, that's what most of them are, to people who aren't like, really, you know, in it. I'd recommend it. I'd recommend it. This is my first video review. I'm doing video reviews now because I hate having to check my grammar all the time when I'm writing reviews. And so this is the new gig. All right. I um, guess I'm going to make another one on Tuesday when all the new comic books come out.